Aloha, my name is Carlin Pipes Nielsen of Aquatic Edge, and I'm here in Kona, Hawaii, the home of the Ironman World Championships. And what I'm going to do today is put together a little video along with Triadic showing you three focus points that you can work on to improve your open water swimming to take it to a new level. One of the very first tips that I like to suggest is a great way to warm up, in particular when the water's cold or if you don't have a lot of space or just basically kind of in general, um, a great way to get your heart rate up in a very small space. And so what I'm talking about is something I call chicken stroke. And what it is basically is that you're going to be spinning your arms at a really rapid rate, kicking really hard and just taking your arms and spinning them like a chicken into the water and that will elevate your heart rate. Now you only do this for a short burst of speed, like maybe 10 to 15 strokes, and then after that you kind of shut it down, maybe swim some easier strokes. But the whole point is to spin the arms without a lot of pressure on the pole, get a big kick going, get some blood flow into your legs, and then that will elevate your heart rate. And if you can do this maybe one to two or three times prior to the start of the race, in particular if you're it's in a water start, you're gonna get that heart opened up, you're gonna get some blood flow going, and the best fact of all is you're gonna look like such a spaz that people are gonna give you plenty of room. So we're gonna show you how to do the chicken stroke. Chicken stroke is a great way to get warmed up in a really small space. You're gonna do that by taking the arm and then stabbing it right back in the water. Both arms over and over and over and over again, and then with a big monster kick, and the whole idea is to kind of spike the heart rate up, get you kind of opened up so we're that start of the race, which can be a lot of stress. So this is how the chicken stroke looks. Start out with both arms like this, and go. That's it! A little spastic stroke, but it really works. So let's do that again. start and believe me you start doing that a few times and everyone is going to give you plenty of room because you look like a total spaz. All right, the second tip that I'm going to give you is something that I teach in my aquatic edge swim technique clinics and uh, camps worldwide is I really endorse a wider hand entry stroke. So most people come into the center here I'm suggesting that you place your hands out more like a V. Now this goes against what a lot of the current readings say, but the reality of it is, is this is an unstable environment. And in particular in the ocean, it's even more unstable. It's constantly moving. So by having this wider hand placement, you're going to be more balanced. For instance, if you're standing on a boat and you're standing there with your feet together and the boat starts rocking, you're going to split your feet. And that's exactly what happens when you lose your balance in swimming. Hand goes into the center, you lose your balance, and you split your feet, creating a huge amount of drag. So the second focus point that I'd like to work with you on is a wider hand entry stroke. Not only will you be more balanced, you'll have access to larger muscle groups, and you'll swim straighter, which is one of the best ways to drop your time for any open water swim, is to swim straighter. So, wide hand entry. In order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of head up water polo freestyle. You find the best place for you to get that job done, because it's really hard with your head out of the water. And then once you keep that, look at that wide hand entry, you put your head down and continue to swim this way. Now keep in mind, when you're swimming head of water polo, that is not open water sighting, which is going to be our third tip. stroke. If you recall, I mentioned that the reason for this is it's a lot more stable in this moving aquatic environment. It helps you find your balance. So one of the best ways to figure out where your ideal hand placement is, is to swim head up freestyle. And because head up freestyle is so hard, your butt's dragging, you're causing a lot of drag, you'll intuitively figure out where you need to put your hands. So you just swim kind of some head up water polo freestyle. Notice that it's a lot easier when I put my hands to the wider side. One way that you can compare is to actually think about maybe comparing a couple of different widths. So I call this the Goldilocks drill. Try it too wide, not easy. Try it kind of more in the center, also harder. And then, because this is Goldilocks, we 
can find your just right. So your just right is just a little bit wider than your shoulder. And that's your ideal hand placement for your open water freestyle stroke. you're all warmed up you've got a nice wider stroke which is more balanced what I want to do is work on with you is sighting and a lot of people kind of are really confused about when and where they're supposed to sight and the problem with most sighting techniques is you end up lifting your whole head up out of the water and that creates hip drag making it harder for you to swim and you lose momentum so what I like to recommend is that you peer forward keeping your mouth in the water look and then you turn and get a breath so as you go to take your stroke, you look, keep your mouth in the water, and then you turn and get a breath. And what you do is you do this two or three times. If you hasn't, haven't seen the object that you're trying to find, you go ahead and put your head down anyway. Because the bottom line is as long as you're still around other people and you're kind of going in the general direction, you're okay. But if you take a look around, whether it's above water or below water, and nobody's near you, then you might want to stop, figure out where the heck you are, and find the next buoy. So good open water sighting should not disrupt your stroke. It should be smooth and effortless and not take a lot of energy because the last thing you want to do is to slow down too much or have somebody come up on your back. So open water sighting is really important and I'm going to show you those tips. So the whole idea is to not upset your balance too much by taking little sneak peeks of where you're trying to go. Keep in mind, it's a great idea to find something, some object in the background that's much bigger than that small buoy. Because you can find a tree or a building or a boat a lot easier than a buoy. So what you want to do is you want to lift up your head only slightly, keeping your mouth in the water, and then you're going to turn and get a breath. So you kind of peer forward and then turn and get a breath. Keeping the mouth in the water and then turn and get a breath. So, and you try it two or three times and if you haven't seen that object, then go ahead and put your head down and keep swimming. All right? As you can see, I can pretty much keep my normal stroke, not disrupt my pattern at all, and yet still get an idea of where I need to go. One thing to be cautious about is if you start looking up and you can't see the buoy, and you also notice that there's nobody around you, that's a good idea to stop, take a good assessment of where you are, and then figure out where you, what your next course of action is. when you're sighting is you don't necessarily always have to look forward to figure out where you're going. If you breathe to the right, you can shoot and make sure that you see other people or breathe to the left. The other thing you can use is underwater, you can use your sight to see if there's other bodies nearby you. If you look forward, can't figure out where you're going, look left and right and nobody's around you, that might be the only time you want to stop, take a look around and get an assessment of where you need to go because you could be way off course. But the whole idea with open water sighting is not to do it so much that you get tired and not to slow yourself down too much. So you really want to practice this as often as you can, whether it be in the open water or in a pool.